Hey, everybody, Thomas here. And again, we're here with Mr. Howard and Mr. Robert. Mr. Howard's gonna show us how to go ahead and set with the Cook's uh, Cat Claw Setter. This is a fantastic machine. Robert doesn't really have anything bad to say about this machine. This is probably one of the best setters out on the market. You'd agree with that? I agree. Yep, and then uh, Howard has is, is really gotten really good at this. And again, this is gonna be a video also to help myself uh, with our Cook's Cat Claw Setter. Because in my opinion, this is the hardest part of the whole process. And uh, we're gonna just see how they do it. Just a little bit about this machine. It's, it's Cook's Cat Claw, it comes from Cook's Saw equipment down here in South Alabama. It's heavy duty. That sucker's heavy. Everything on it is well built. For what we do, it does a fantastic job. It is it perfect? No. Will it will it, it get you in a ballpark? I say more than the ballpark, because what we do is we tweak this all the time and we stay within one to two thousandths, maybe three we'll get out sometime. That's the thickness of the hair. And uh but the machine is really good. My son has took this over from me. He's doing an outstanding job. Quite proud of him. And he can explain to you what he's doing here. So, Robert, are you still know how to do it, though? Yeah, I know how to do it, yeah. <laughs> I've only done. Look, look right here. Look, look this, this year, th there was another bag, too. Th there was 3,200 of these we did this year. That's what we did last year. 3,200 blades. Blades. That were set. Actually, they were cleaned inspected set and sharpened in this shop that's impressive i don't care who you are folks that's that's pretty damn impressive that's a lot of thin curved bandsaw blood <laughs> and on our way to do double that this year yes with some new tools slash toys yep <laughs> like i said this is the cat claw dual two sharpener and it set setter and for the amount of blades that we do per day which can vary to one extreme to another to none it does the job quite well for what we what we require and after i've cleaned and inspected the blade i know this one's pretty good and i set it on the sharpener and what you want to do is you want to set your indicators to zero and in order to do that, I put the blade in here and I find a straight tooth. Not two that have angles, but the tooth that's in the, between those, that's just straight up and down. The regular tooth. And I, 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 take, I take off on the anvils where they're not hitting the blade at all. The only thing hitting the blade is the two push pins on the dial indicator. And I lift it up to about halfway of the blade and I go to it and my dial indicators both say zero on a straight two. I try to get them as close as I can like dad explained. If if you're off, if you do one two, 21, 22 thousandths and you have another one that's 23, you're, you're doing pretty well because 90% of your setters aren't gonna get it exact 21,000, 21,000 every time. If you do, you're, you've got a pretty good setter. Now that we have our indicators dialed to zero, I can set each tooth I'll, I'll go ahead and set the indicator where I'm getting them around 20 to 22 thousandths. Which is about where we, we like to say 22, 23 thousandths. And you have to test a couple times to get it get it exactly right. Yeah, so this is literally a trial and error. You're just bringing it in until you get the teeth to where you're looking for. This is, this is what takes some finesse. And that's why a lot of people have trouble with this machine because they just want to get it set and then go. And you really got to feel the blade out as she goes around because that set can be... It can vary a little bit, but also... Every blade is different, so you can't just set it up once and roll with it. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty good right now. 
And once I get them set, I can roll. I can keep my eye on them as I go to make sure if any of them move or differ, I can change them. You may have saw earlier, I marked the weld joint on this blade. A lot of times the set changes after you pass the weld joint. I can go faster or slower. Here's my weld joint. So I'm good on this blade. And you see how they have it marked right there at the white? That's how he can easily indicate where his weld joint has and is and to look to make sure it's not changing direction on them. Now folks, I don't care who you are, that is setting the blade fast right there. done because my mark is right there and I can see that I've already set these teeth I know I can after you've done about 60,000 blades you can tell what the set <laughs> is on a blade I can it's 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 a repetitious thing to know stuff like that that's for sure so he so, essentially uh, set that entire blade in about a minute and 30 seconds this is a hundred and almost 80 inch blade I'm resetting everything because it's it's a it's a good idea to check your indicators quite often because blade <laughs> thicknesses, sizes, tooth angles, everything changes and is not consistent on every blade. So check it often. And we're going to show another angle. So you can see it. So this is one angle here, but just to show you kind of how the dial indicators are, are reacting and stuff like that. And he also, they have my old handheld dial indicator right here. Mm -hmm. And that's actually your true test to make sure that you're reading what you should be reading. Sometimes true. Sometimes true. I question it quite often. <laughs> Folks, I'm now going to show you the kind of the top down view here. This is going to be reverse if you were actually the one operating the machine. Mr. Howard's right hand is advancing the blade. His left hand in the up and down direction is what actually causes uh, the shaft down below to go through the two cams here and everything. And it causes the, the head to clamp together and these two little anvils are what actually bend the teeth over. Now, one thing you gotta watch out for is if you have the hardened teeth, you know, where do you wanna put those anvils? You wanna be at least a sixteenth to eighth of an inch below the tip of that tooth. So, have you heard that? If you push up on the tip of that tooth on a double hard blade, you'll snap it off. Exactly. So, when you see those double hard teeth, you got to shoot a little bit lower on there because, like you said, if you did on the tip, it will break off. Now, say you get a, a tooth that's way out of spec. I have a tool just for that. And like they said, if it's very hardened, and when you go to, I have a bolt here that we've cut a slit. And this in the end of it where it fits over this tooth I can move it left or right and if it's bent one direction more than the degree that I'm desiring I can bend it back if it's a very hard tooth it's probably gonna snap mm -hmm. so if it snaps off there's the blade still okay just as long as there aren't several in a row if there's one here one over there everything should be okay this is a very handy tool Exactly. That's my secret. It's very easy to make too. <laughs> so again, you watch that go through there. It's it's quite impressive. Again, he can do a blade in about a minute and 30 seconds. Very impressive. So what else you got to say, Mr. Robert, about this? Keep it lubricated. Yes. On this machine, you said... It advances three teeth. You have a left tooth, a right tooth, and a record tooth. A left, a right, and a record, all the way around the peripheral of this blade. So that handle that he's advancing it with pushes three teeth at a time. When he raises this up, it sets two teeth, and then he advances it, and when he pushes it down, it sets two teeth. So you set two on the upstroke, two on down on the downstroke, all the way, and that speeds this process up. Now he said something a while ago about these indicators we set at 20. 
the blade actually set at about 23 to 24. I have been over this machine with cooks and different people who own this piece of equipment. And these indicators right here will not read the same as this indicator right here. I like this indicator. When you put it on there and you zero it on that blade, that gives you the truth. That is supposed to. And why it doesn't, you'll have to ask God because I don't know. <laughs> it, it just don't. But it gets you closer. If we set to 20, we know we're sitting at 22 to 24, 23 to 24. And that's where we really want to be is 23 to 24. So we set these at 20, and we know when we get through, we're 20, 23, 24 thousandths. That satisfies our customers. Exactly. Customers like it very much. Uh, I won't say very much. They're satisfied with it. They like it. The blades cut good for them. And they keep, that keeps that set remains for about two sharpenings. This machine here, like I say, it's a Cook's dual tooth setter. It's a, it's a super good machine. It's heavy. It doesn't get out of adjustment easy as long as you got everything tight on it. And you didn't have those tight. I did, I just saw you just loosened loosen them. All up. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, you, uh, I got my, my some timers kicked in. I was gonna say something. Come all, most of the timers. All, all the timers. <laughs> no, I, just, I got the I got the some timers and the most of the timers. I hadn't quite got to the all timers yet, but uh, so but, th but this this machine here, you have to get a feel for it. You can't walk out here the very first time you set this machine up. Grab that handle and this handle and do that. You'll be you'll be all over the place. You'll, it's kind of like doing this. You know, you think, gosh, that ain't that ain't hard to do. After you do three or four blades, you think there was nothing to that. So here's a question. This is a seven eighths two spacing. Yeah. How do you do a three quarter? How do you change if you if you're changing the spacing in your teeth? What do you do? You have to adjust the push, which you can either shorten it or decrease it. Then you also have these two bolts for each indicator, which you loosen both, and it will move the indicator to the left or the right or in this case, closer to a three quarter blade or out to a seventh eighth inch. Blade. Okay, so you, you do have to move the dial indicator? We, we, we don't usually move this one. Okay. We, we move this one. one, we move this one. That makes sense. And then on this right here, when he's whenever you loosen this up and you run this screw in or out, that either increases the length of the stroke or shortens the stroke. And then you have this knob back here where you can raise your handle up or take it back. He, I, I like my handle about right here. Howard likes his all the way back. And that's, neither one of us is wrong. That's just what's comfortable to us and that's how we run it. So you have an adjustment right here and you have an adjustment right here to shorten this from a seven eighths to a three quarter two space. Okay, so that's really good information though. It makes sense. Keep one of them as your, you know, your standard. Always keep it there. Only adjust one. If you adjust two, you have to do essentially two measurements there. That's right. And whenever you go seven eighths, these these handles in here are half inch wide. But whenever you go to a three quarter, you're you're gonna be touching right here on the tip of this one, and, and back here on this one a little bit. You just almost miss this one, but it will grab enough of that tooth to push it. Okay. So and that's tool steel, so that's that's tool steel. That is definitely right. harder than anything you're gonna be putting on there. How hard is it? Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> we ain't gonna talk about how hard it is now. So. How do you adjust the height? So you have like, a, this is an inch and a quarter blade. So if you have an inch and a half blade. Sure, tell them how. You just loosen or tighten each of these two things yep. here. I think one pushes it up, one goes down, and you can lift it up or down. And this push pin pushes it to the set position. And again, the setting of the, the height. How how high, so where, do the anv where are the anvils actually hitting on the teeth? Cook. Cook tells you, bring this up, Howard. Cook tells you that this blade right here, he just adjusted that up a little bit, that the gullet of this tooth should be level with the top of this block. Okay. Here and in here. That's the desired, that's the desired position. So it needs that's to go down. Position. However, however, it don't always work out that way. Some of these teeth may be shorter or taller. 
All blades are different. They're different. If you get a turbo blade, you got taller teeth. If you get a 747 blade, it's got teeth taller than that. So this right here, the gullet of this being even with the top of this block doesn't always work out. Okay. But what you want to do is make sure that right in, shoot right in here, Thomas, that right in here that you've got the top, the tip of that tooth is not up, not the, that, look at me, Thomas. That anvil in there is on a wedge shape like this. Okay. It's not flat. Correct. So now you can put it back in here. So whenever you bring this up, if you'll look, the, yes, the you part of that. that anvil that's pushing is below the tip of that tooth, and that's where you want it. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. So hopefully you can see right there that is a, the anvil does come out to a point, and he is pushing below the tip of that tooth. Because, mm -hmm. again, if you do it at the top of that tooth, you risk... Uh, we're just snapping it snapping off. Snapping it off. And that really depends on the type of blade it is. Gotcha. So, folks, I hope this is helpful. Again, we're trying to show as close, close up as best we can the process of setting a blade. Because, in my opinion, this is the hardest part of it because every blade is unique. You can't just throw a blade on there and then throw the next blade on there and hope it's all the same. You have to really know what you're doing. you got to sharpen and set quite a few blades before you can... You know, start doing it for the public, if you will. Right here, Tom. Keep this machine lubricated. Yep. Oil and air on that is your best friend. We got air hose hanging down right here. He blows that off constantly. We got oil that we put on there constantly. We like everything lubricated and moving good. That machine is is one that you have to get a feel for. You just have to get it. Yeah, you can read the tech manual and and get in there and you can operate it and then you're gonna get frustrated with it a little bit. You just have to get the feel for that blade. And after you've, like Howard says, after you've done seven or 800 blades, then you pretty much got it figured out. Yep. It's kinda like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, again, hope you found this video informational. If you have any questions, uh, we're trying to get these two individuals to create their own channel and to be the wealth of knowledge and uh, answer questions from people out there, but also, again, spread the knowledge of sharpening and setting blades. So again, we'll see you around. Please like, subscribe. We're going to go on to video number three, which is the actual sharpening with the new Woodmiser BSM 250. BMS. BMS. Yeah, I think I said that wrong like four times. You have. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is, am I saying something that's inappropriate, BSM? <laughs> It's not inappropriate. It, you just... It, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were thinking S&M. <laughs> yep. All right, folks. We'll see you around. <laughs>